Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net and in this video I'm going to show you how to add 10 miles per hour to your serve. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend as those are the best ways to support this channel. All right, I'm going to give you five tips and I hope each tip gives you a few miles per hour and by the end of this you are going to have a faster serve. So the first tip is to be as loose as possible throughout the motion. In fact, you can do this with me. Grab your racket and just shadow swing the loosest serves possible. You should almost feel like the racket's gonna come out of your hand. Be really, really loose. We wanna feel, I, I tell people, don't be, you know, spaghetti still in the box. Be cooked spaghetti. You want to be as loose as possible, like a whip, right? You wanna be like a whip that you can snap. In the end, you get this big crack. The reason you can snap a whip is because how loose it is. So if you want that snap on your serve, you're gonna to have to be extremely loose. So again, you can shadow swing this. In fact, I was doing this before I even pushed record for this video because I wanted to loosen up my arm so I didn't hurt myself while recording. But just learn to shadow swing without even changing what you do. Just try to be really, really loose. One thing I've noticed actually helps players to be looser and to not apply so much grip pressure, which actually tenses everything in your arm and actually makes you travel slower, is to replace your grip and get a new grip. It's great that most people worry a lot about their strings from the type to the tension, but I've, I've strung rackets where the person was very specific about what string they wanted on the, you know, me to use, but then they came in and the grip was all old and slimy and slippery. If your grip is old, you're not going to feel very secure holding it loosely, which is actually a, a, a key way to, to swing faster. And you'll actually inadvertently force yourself to apply too much grip pressure. So put a new grip on your racket so that even when you're loose, you're not afraid it's going to go flying out of your hand. That's a nice little side tip. Yes, we want to be really loose, but put a new grip, you know, over grip, replacement grip on your racket so you get some good tack and some good traction, and you, when you are loose, you won't be afraid that the, the uh, racket's gonna come flying out of your hand. So once you do a couple shadow swings like that, then just hit a few serves. And my goal when I hit these serves is to look sloppy almost, is to just be a bag of bones, just be, just cook spaghetti, and I'm super, super loose. My goal is not to even hit it in the box. <laughs> my goal is just to be as relaxed and as loose as possible. So shadow swing, some really loose serves where I'm, I'm trying to just be sloppy. Be super sloppy, be super loose. I think, I think if we were to feel what some of the pros feel like on their serve, we would be shocked. Where we have a lot of tension and they're super loose and super relaxed. And by the way, put a new grip on your racket. You'll be more willing to be looser in your hand and whippier and faster and you'll still feel confident that the racket is not gonna come flying out of your hand. All right, tip number two. I want you to practice tossing lower than you do. So I, I just the other night did a private Zoom lesson for a player. And uh, I do Zoom lessons, live Zoom lessons with people, private lessons. People send me from around the world, they send me technique, uh, videos of their technique. And was, this was a serve lesson. And this player, she had a, a toss that was about six feet higher uh, than she could reach. And when you toss really high, you give yourself a lot of time to swing, which is not the environment for racket speed. You actually want to toss a little lower than you typically do, still toss as high as you can reach. I mean, if you look at Kyrgios, his ball drops, I would say, about six, eight inches, which is great. Anywhere from like a foot and a half higher than you can reach and lower. But if you've got a toss that's just way up in the air, you're going to have to waste time, whether it, that means swinging in a way you don't want to or slowing your racket down and messing up the timing. I want you to try tossing lower than you normally do. In fact, I'm going to do a drill here where I'm going to feel like I'm hitting a sidearm serve just to practice this. So my goal, again, this is not what I actually want to do when I'm serving, but just for this drill's purpose, I'm going to actually toss what feels to be way too low into the side of me. And my goal is to create the environment where I have to swing fast. If I don't swing fast, what's the ball gonna do? If I, if I hitch 
the, the ball's already gone. I love the concept of cre creating the environment for racket speed. Now again, I'm not telling you that you've got to be Roscoe Tanner and you got to hit the ball at the very peak, meaning you only toss the ball 10 to 18 inches out of your outstretched hand, that it's a really low toss. I'm not saying you have to hit the ball at the peak where you only toss as high as you can reach. If you want to toss a foot higher, a foot and a half higher than that, that's fine. But once you start tossing four, five, six, eight, I've seen people with tosses that go eight feet higher than they can reach. You're creating a situation where you've got a lot of time to swing, which you don't want, because then you've got to slow your swing down and wait for the ball. But also then as the ball drops, it accelerates through the window of hitting. So it actually makes you not sure when to swing and you don't swing your absolute fastest and commit to the fastest swing because you're still trying to time the ball. Practice tossing lower than you actually do normally as if you are someone who tosses very high. You'll give yourself less time to swing and it's kind of like if you're late for work, you gotta drive fast. It's the same thing. Once you toss very low, your racket will feel like it's late and it'll have to swing very fast. So instead of doing this sidearm drill, let me actually hit some serves and I'm actually gonna use the the actual serve that I, or the toss that I use. Let me just hit some serves and just watch how low to the right of me, because centripetal force is gonna throw the racket off to the right, so I actually wanna put the toss in the way of my racket. I'm actually gonna to toss into the court as well, so I'm leaning in, getting my body weight going into the serve. But watch how low I toss this ball. My goal with, the, with those serves was to hit the ball very near the peak. Again, if I toss the ball high, I've got to waste time and I could either mess up the timing, stop my racket, or start to do something to waste time waiting for that ball to come down. But tossing lower will actually make my swing more efficient. I'm going to cut out the stuff that I don't need and I'm going to make sure that I step on the gas to get to that ball before it drops. All right, next tip. This is all about, let me get my birthday hat here. Where the heck is that? There it is. This is all about getting rid of the waiter's tray. I'm not a fan of a drill that I've seen players do where they put their back up against a fence and then they swing and they don't hit the fence. If you look at Osaka, you look at Kyrgios, Federer, Djokovic, Sam Groth, you know, he's... Uh, known for having the fastest serve ever, 163 miles per hour. You'll watch something very amazing about their serves. Where their racket, if I put a birthday hat on my head, it illustrates this perfectly. Their racket knocks a birthday hat off from in front to back. And if you look at Federer, you look at Kyrgios, if they had a fence up against their back, they would hit the fence this way. Their racket would go from in front to behind and they would smack the fence. I just smacked my hat right there. What you want to do is go out and get a birthday hat and you want to learn how to move the racket. Remember, we're being really loose, we're tossing low. We want to move the racket from in front to back and wearing a birthday hat actually serving is the best way to give you the instant feedback you need to see if you're doing the waiter's tray, which would never hit the birthday hat, or if you're moving your racket the way Federer moves his, or Kyrgios, or Osaka. Go out and get a birthday hat. If you're a coach, get a bunch of these and hand them out to your players. It's instant feedback. You could even, you know, if you're a coach, put your, put your phone number on the inside. Make it like almost like a marketing tool. But get a bunch of birthday hats and get your players serving. It's actually, if any of you have an in with Federer, it is a, lifelong dream at the moment to, <laughs> to be on the court with Roger Federer and have him serve while wearing a birthday hat. So if any of you have any connections, please contact me, ryan at twominutetennis.net. Send me an email. I, uh, I am dying to get on the court with Federer and film a video with him knocking a birthday hat off from in front to back. So let me just hit some serves here and I'm gonna get rid of my waiter's tray serve. I'm gonna get rid of my waiter's tray serve by making sure that I knock the birthday hat off of my head. I always miss the first serve. I wonder why that is. 
So look, see how the birthday hat, I knocked it off from in front to back. Many players have reached out to me, like direct message on Instagram, or you know, they'll, they'll comment on, in TikTok or Facebook or here on, on YouTube, and they'll say, are you knocking the birthday hat off from back to front? It's like, no, 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 this is the throwing motion. The throwing motion that Kyrgios and Osaka use, they, they use a, a motion where the racket passes from in front of the head to behind the head. So go out and get a birthday hat and learn how to knock the birthday head off. And that'll give you the circular motion that those players use that is very much like the throwing motion. All right, tip number four. This is all about harnessing the reactive break of the left arm. This creates a little controversy whenever I mention this because players have the wrong idea of what this, this tucking is of the tossing arm. If you look at Federer from the side, right? So I'm not gonna move the camera right now, but let's say I'm serving that way. So I'm serving, you're looking at me from the side, the baseline is this direction. If you look at Federer hit a serve, as his elbow is coming forward and up and his chest starts rotating, you'll notice that his chest is rotating, but then when he gets to the ball, his chest stops rotating momentarily. And that's actually a way to whip the hitting arm. When you watch Dominic Thiem, Andy Murray, Andy Roddick, they all, Roger Federer, they pull this tossing arm in against their body as they make contact. And even like Dominic Thiem and Andy Murray are very well known for moving this tossing arm behind them. But we want to slow the body's rotation down. It's a reactive break. And when we slow the body's rotation down and we stop the body by pulling this arm in, the tossing, or sorry, the hitting arm accelerates. I always in the comments have somebody say, no, it's like figure skating. When you pull your arm in, you spin faster. Don't take my word for it. Go on YouTube, look at a, look at a video of Federer hitting a serve from the side, from the side view, serving that direction and look at his chest as he is rotating toward contact. He rotates his chest and then right here his chest slows down and his arm goes without the chest moving a lot. That means that when he tossed the ball and then his tossing arm dropped down in front of him and then pulled back in, that means that slowed the body's rotation down and the energy's gotta go somewhere and it's called a reactive break and it actually accelerates the racket. So what I tell my students is this, when you toss the ball and then you're going to drop the tossing arm, drop it down in front of you like you're reaching out towards your opponent and then pull it back in against your body. If you look at Federer when he's contacting, it's almost like his arm is in a sling. Like his arm is broken and the doctor gave him a sling to just put his arm against. Just look at Federer from the front when he's contacting and his arm looks like this. So when you toss, and the racket hits your birthday hat, that's the proper timing to then drop the tossing arm and then pull it back in against your body. That'll slow the body's rotation down and then you'll whip the racket. So watch where my tossing arm is when I'm done hitting this serve. See how it's right here? I, I tell my students, you look at Arthur Ashe, I mean, this, this is nothing new, this is what they did. But I always tell my students that your left hand, if you're right-handed, your left hand should smell like your right armpit. <laughs> You know, because it's, it's, it's in front of you. Now, many players do this and they quick throw it back. I'm not a fan of that because it just leads to players not tucking. So tuck it. This is the important part. Tuck it. And then if you swing and follow through, the tossing hand will actually be in your hitting armpit. So again, I'm going to tuck this left arm against my body as a reactive break to stop my body and get more miles per hour from my hitting arm. Again, the low toss forces me to swing really fast and then I'm gonna stop my body's rotation and that whips my racket even faster. And then the last tip is to make sure, we we're talking about the snap, make sure that the racket overtakes your hand. Many players have an angle behind their racket. And if I serve from the side here, and if you're a coach, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They keep this angle intact. So the racket, and this is usually a player who has a forehand grip. So you want to make sure you have the continental grip. But you need to have the angle behind your hand. You can see it's like a 90 degree angle here. And then when you're done, 
have the, the angle in front of your hand. So the racket needs to overtake your hand. So you actually want to practice this, as I'm about to demonstrate now, without a ball, and you'll notice my racket is on its edge, and then I'm going to pronate, pointing my strings the opposite direction. So here my strings are facing off to the left of the camera. Here my strings are facing off to the right of the camera. Reverse that if you're left-handed. And you just want to feel the pronation of the racket snapping. Uh, when I was a kid, they would use a mercury thermometer. I'm dating myself here, but they would use a mercury thermometer under my tongue, right? I was very little at the nurse's office. And the nurse would give me the, the mercury thermometer, and, and the nurse would go like this with the mercury thermometer and snap it like this. This move is such a fast way to move your hand. If you hurt your hand, you go, ow. You don't go, ow. You go, oh my gosh, ow. And you're like, oh, it hurt my hand. And it's palm in, palm out. That move is the same move you want to make up here. It's how you truly snap that last link of the forearm and hand and racket through contact. So as you're striking the ball, you have stopped your body. Make sure that you're, and again, this is why being super loose was my first tip, because you're not going to be super tight and then pronate. You've got to be super loose, letting the racket go from behind your hand to your front, in front of your hand. Do not think that it's a wrist flick like this, where the strings face up and then the strings face down. Don't do that. Let your racket be on edge and let the racket be on edge again. And you're just going to make this loose snap at the top that then culminates into a follow through. So I'm going to hit some serves and I'm really going to work on the snap occurring at the very top. Again, I'm not snapping my wrist so much as I'm turning and snapping my forearm. When I'm done hitting, I'm actually going to have a very flat wrist rather than thinking I'm like shooting a, a free throw where I'm making that move. It's not what I'm doing. I'm actually going to snap the whole forearm. Again, being loose is what's going to make that possible. So I'm done hitting, my strings are facing off to the right. Now I just demonstrated that to show you where my strings are facing, but I don't want you to stop right there. So that kind of hurt my arm a little bit to abruptly stop. So I'm just going to let my, my follow through happen naturally now. So I want you to try those five tips. Be extremely loose. And as a side tip to that, get a new grip on your racket. When you have a secure grip and good traction, you'll be more willing to be super loose. Be super loose, shadow swing. Practice tossing much lower than you normally would. Get a birthday hat and bring the racket in over your head. Make sure, so that you don't do the waiter's tray, make sure that you're pulling the tossing arm in against your body to slow the body's rotation down. And then the last thing is, because you, you brought this tossing arm in, then you're gonna snap the forearm with pronation. You use those five tips and you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.